much, but still in the beginning, we want to have you in. Yeah, sure. And uh, yeah, Philip, you and have you, to come you in. Can, you can still some. You can still ask some I questions, ask some right? Questions. Yes, of course. Okay, we'll do a very quick introduction, and then we will jump right into uh, everything you need to know about filters, filtration, and backwash. We will cover different types of filters. We will talk about filter hydraulics, the importance of the design of filters. We will talk about how to calculate filtration and backwash velocities. Um, uh, and we will talk about proper backwash, right? Yeah, great. Let's go to the next one and finally Q&A. Exactly. I think this is why I want to have Florov to explain us the next two sessions, uh, mm -hmm. the next the two slides, slides yeah. or yes. sessions. No, so it's again. exactly like session one. You will be able to send us your questions at any time during the presentation using this Q&A button on the bottom of your screen. You can show it again. Um, and when we go through the questions, you will also be able to raise your hand if you want to speak. You don't have to, but you can. And we can unmute your microphone mm -hmm. in this case. The chat, you also have the chat here on the bottom of your screen. This chat, maybe use it more for suggestions, feedback, you know, to, to just to tell us if you liked it or not like it, what you liked, what, you know, everything else. What you miss. Yeah. And we already right. learned from you, from your first chat. Well, we got a lot of uh, feedback from by email. If you go on the next slide, uh, and you see we have done some improvements, right? Yes. Maybe you explain. So this. instead of jumping back and forth to the the homepage, I made this little slide just again to remind you that all the sessions are recorded and will be available for seven days uh, on our website homepage. So drydenaqua.com uh, on the the bottom uh, left, or you will see it on the left side. Uh, all the sessions recorded, seven days, not more than seven days, right? And then we, we change to the next se session every time. So every Friday night, I will upload, tonight, I will upload session two, the replay of session two. And that's there for seven days, huh? and then it will disappear. Uh, Florent, what's the question? What is the, uh, the difference between English and U.S.? English and U.S., basically, it's the, the metric. Uh, yes. It's, uh, it's more adapted to the U.S. market in general. The pre so presentation. It's gallon per minute instead yeah. of cubic meters per hour. Huh? Yes. So you look where you feel uh, more comfortable. And, and what's up to here? The, the so again, arrow. yeah, we have uh, the the top right link here. You can find the program <clears throat> again. Please share it with your customers, with your colleagues. Uh, you find it in four languages, but English. Um, and then you also find under the same link you find the PDF presentations. So these presentations you can print on every Thursday night. I will put them, I will upload them under this link. So to prepare, you know, you can print it out and just uh, have it during the presentation. Great. Good. Thanks, Florent. Thanks. Thank you, guys. See you later. See you Enjoy later. the show and uh, I will be back. Eh? Perfect. Sure. I will be back. That reminds me of a famous movie. Yes. Okay. What's about the pyramid, Philip? Okay. So you remember the pyramid from last time. The takeaway from here is get the pyramid right, which means the pyramid needs to stand on a solid foundation like this. Like the Egyptian. And not on the tip like this. Yes. Huh? So That's what it is. filtration and hydraulics first, chemicals last. Yeah. Make it stable. Okay. Let's go to the next one. So here we really start with, with what we want to talk about today, about uh, first the different filters. Philip will explain us, uh, uh, especially the E filters. He is the expert yes, in DE filters, absolutely. and we talk about sound filters and cartridge filters. I mean, you all know this, but let's give a short overview, yep. and then we go into filter medias. Excellent. So first, let's talk about sand filters. Yeah, yeah why not? Huh? Yeah, okay. Good, sure. So sand filters, very well known. You know, give us a filtration of twenty to thirty microns. Uh, they're easy, convenient, uh, easy to clean, easy to use. Uh, you can use them with all types of disinfection, water type uh, treatments. Uh, you can use them with flocculants, coagulants. Yes, uh, that's, that's a big, a big plus. But then, you know, really on the downside is, as we all know, sand is a natural biofilter. So it will biofoul, it will channel. The performance of a sand filter will go down over time. Uh, you need a lot of backwash water to clean it. Not and a lot, but you need some backwash yeah, water. Yeah, quite a bit. You right? need, yeah. And then, you know, ultimately you need to replace your sand, you know. Yeah, and this also depends very much how properly you're backwashing your filter. So if you make a lousy job there, you have to, 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 to replace it quite often. You know, I heard in South Africa, sometimes they replace the media every year. Mm -hmm. uh, well, 
I, I would love that if they would replace our media ever, every year. But I would say, and uh, in, in other public pools, you know, it's 10 in Switzerland up to 20 years. So we say in average, something like five years, depending a little bit on, on uh, the backwash procedure and on the, the filter hydraulic that we also want mm -hmm. to talk. Exactly. Okay. okay. Next one, cartridge filter. Okay, let me uh, take yeah. this. What is a cartridge filter? I, I mean, is it good, bad? Honestly, it's it's a compromise. You know, the, the, the beauty it's 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 small, it's cheap, it's compact. Uh, this is why we use this very often. You know, in small pools, in quite quite uh, economy pools. You know, above ground pools. Beauty is you don't have to backwash them. Uh, that's also a downside if you don't can backwash them, then very often you don't bring really uh, uh, fresh water in, which is uh, uh, negative. Um, but I mean, this, this cartridges has to, be, uh, has to be washed from time to time. And you know, the, the smaller the cartridges, the bigger the load, the more often you have to wash. Sometimes you have to replace them, especially if you have water, you know, and they're blocked with calcium. I mean, of course you can use acid to clean mm -hmm. them, but at a certain time, it does not work anymore. So it's it's uh, you cannot use coagulation flocculation. Mm. So it's uh, I would say it's a compromise. It's better than to have nothing, but it would be not my 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 first uh, choice for uh, the filtration. You know, usually these uh, uh, these uh, uh, cartridges goes down to fifty micron, which is not great. I mean, you can go also to 20 micron, but then the, the cartridge is blocked they block much, much, much faster. faster huh? Then yeah. you need bigger filters like you see here. I mean, this yeah. is a very reasonable filter, good filter, also quite an expensive filter. Mm. Uh, this one here from, from uh, Hayward. But if you have small filters, you know, and then you, you're, not, you're not going to 20 micron and definitely not to five or even one micron mm -hmm. that you could because mm -hmm. that would block within a day. Yeah. So, okay, for spa, small pools, we would not recommend it really for... Yeah for commercial pools and also not for nice uh, residential pools. Okay. So let me say a few things about DE filters. Huh? Yeah. I, I, so, this is, uh, uh, you know, he told me uh, he's the expert in DE. So yeah, you know, how, I, how does this come? So I have to admit it. You know, I, I used to own a pool with a DE filter, but this was before I joined Dryden Aqua, yeah, right? So I, did, was... I, I knew anything. I didn't know anything about AFM, but I had a DE filter. And was it good? And, you know, I really liked it initially Yeah. because uh, I had, I got very clean water. I mean, the, the water clarity with a DE filter is is incredible right and um, what do you mean by incredible well you know it's a what would you filter Zero probably one micron no or what? no around five microns maybe even yeah. a little bit less right yeah which really you know you know you don't see any of the particles in the in the water you know in the light uh, at night so you, you get you, the water is very clean yeah no no i fully agree that's also my takeaway we also use the filter here in switzerland mainly in public pools out door public pools and DE honestly is, is quite comparable with mm -hmm. AFM you know we are also in the one to five micron I mean we are more in the one a micron it depends a little bit how you operate the DE filters you know at, at what velocity how often you wash it mm -hmm. how, how proper you make this I mean maybe you quickly explain how well, the DE filter works yeah so you can see this here also a DE filter well maybe even in the next uh, picture actually you, get, you see this better yeah. a DE filter uh, has elements inside um, and what you do is you add the DE powder. It's a very fine powder that you add into the skimmer, for example, and it washes up onto these elements. And so it gives like a layer on it gives, these elements. Exactly. It gives yeah. like a layer on these elements and that's what's, you know, providing them the filtration. Okay. But and that holds forever then? or No, it doesn't. I mean, and that's the downside, you know. So after my initial excitement about the DE filter, you know, I realized that it's really high maintenance and also higher cost because now what you need to do, you, you also need to backwash your filter every two to four weeks. And uh, every time you backwash, you lose all the DE, yeah. right? Because you reverse the flow, the DE is pushed away from the from these elements, goes down the drain. So you every time you backwash, you have to replace the DE, right? Okay, that means uh, I, I read, you know, DE should run between three to six meters per hour. So let's say yes. uh, uh, five in average. Yes. So if you have 10 cubic meters of turnover rate, so that would be two two meters. If you want to do it properly, yes. go to four meters. Yes. So that means you would need uh, one to two kilogram of DE of every... 
every two to four weeks, every two time to four you weeks, just when you this. see the pressure increase yes. by yes. 0 0.2, yeah. 0 0.3 bars, yeah. you do yeah. that. Yeah. So, okay, so there's a cost, cost, right? Yeah, there's a cost associated yeah. with it. You're dealing with that uh, with that powder, which is also uh, probably not very healthy to inhale. Yeah, this is what I heard. This perlite is better on the healthy side. That's what they say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, filtration is more or less. So, the same. to be honest, my excitement about the e-filters, um, yeah, was uh, less after a year or two when I realized uh, the maintenance and the cost that's associated with it. And when you learned, uh, you know, AFM, then well, maybe course. you're not that neutral then of course. On, on this. Yeah. But here also we say uh, uh, deep cleaning every two to four months. What does this mean? Mm -hmm. So deep cleaning is what you see this guy doing here. You basically have to uh, open the filter, take out these elements, wash everything down. Uh, often, you know, after a while you have to replace these uh, elements as well because they, they break. Broken, yeah. Exactly. So uh, this is another thing that adds cost to uh, owning a DE filter. Yeah. Uh, huh? That looks not like big fun to do that. <laughs> no, yes. no, it's not. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you have a sand filter with AFM, automatic backwash, that that sounds for us more like state of Sounds like more fun, but absolutely. To summarize, it's a good filter media. It's also yep. bio resistant. It's just a maintenance, yep. uh, a lot of work, and uh, yep. do mix also yep. this DE powder, yep. etc. But in general, it gives a really good uh, filtration. Yes. One last thing, you cannot flocculate DE. You That's cannot true. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Absolutely right. Okay, uh, let me take this. Okay. Uh, filters, uh, we call them sand filters. This is wrong. These are media filters. If you fill them with sand, it's a sand filter. If you fill them with glass, it's a glass filter. If you fill them with AFM, it's an AFM filter. If you fill them with carbon, it's a carbon filter. So we should call them media filter. And uh, do they have all the same efficiency? But you can use the same media filter for all these you can. materials. Same right? hardware for yeah. different softwares. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so what's next? Okay, Philip, please explain me this. So really, you know, what's very important when we compare different medias is that we look at uh, the performance of these medias, yeah. right? So That makes sense. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I guess that's important, <laughs> right? So what we look at uh, first is, is our AFM NG, which uh, provides a nominal 95% filtration down to one micron. One micron? One micron. That's so DE. That's, that's even better, right? That's even better okay. with the convenience of a sand filter, really, with AFM in it, right? 95, why? Because you will never get 100%. So 95 is a good benchmark yeah. to measure. Yeah. Huh? Media filtration are never absolute filtration. It's always nominal yeah. filtration. Yeah. The guideline on 95, that's what you usually do, 90 or 95. Yes. We choose 95 because we always want to go to best yeah. and we reach one micron. So of all these media, what is second best? What do you think? Uh, nature works. Mm. Not really. Not okay. quite. Yeah. It's sand. Sand. A good quality quartz sand provides a 20 micron filtration. And this is sand 0 0.5 to 1.0? This great, is yeah. 0 0.5 to 1.0, yeah. exactly. I, you told me it's the, it was the be very best sand that you found in the UK, mm -hmm. right? So yes. in Switzerland, Germany, we more have yeah. 0.4 to 0.8, yeah. which might be a little bit lower, yeah. maybe to 15 yeah. micron. And then what comes next? Well, and then come all these glass media, and medias. then all the different types of glass media, and right? none of them have beaded uh, uh, sand. I mean, we also have a glass sand called DGS. This is around ten micron, but uh, you know, I mean, what was the takeaway? You know, uh, don't use shitty glass. Better go for sand if you want to make a proper go for AFMNG. You know, yeah. twenty to one micron. That's that's a planet in between. Uh, no, that's a universe yeah, in between, yeah, it's not a planet, it's even bigger. Yeah. So filtration efficiency is important when we compare media. Mm -hmm. Another important aspect oh, go is back. biofouling. Yes, yeah. exactly. Biofouling because these measurements done from IFTS, Institut de la Filtration and Technique Separative, now you see how good I speak French, <laughs> uh, that's the only thing I, I know. This is done with fresh media, 20 meters per hour filtration velocity, one meter filter bed, fresh media. If you run them for six to 12 months, they start to biofile or some of them, and then these curves go down. And this is what we see in the exactly. next slide. Exactly. So when we talk about sand, sand, as we mentioned it, it's a natural biofilter. So it will allow bacteria to attach, form biofilm. It will coagulate over time. The filter uh, will channel and lose 
performance. Huh? Performance of a sand filter will go down. Yeah. These pictures are great because they really show what biofilm can look like um, if you don't pay attention. Huh? Yeah. Then the next one is mixed glass. So with mixed glass, especially if we have a lot of white glass in it, yeah. huh? um, it, is on, it only has a limited bioresistance. Yeah, you know, people out there say, yeah, well, of glass, you know, you grow less of bacterials because it's slippery, they cannot attach. This is bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really, you need uh, the metal oxides, which are coming from the green and the brown uh, thing. And then on the surface, you create some free radicals, free radicals. if you have water with some yep. uh, oxygen. And uh, so the greener and the browner the glass is, the more it becomes bioresistant. But it's it's very very slightly bioresistance like yeah. our DGS. Yeah. So let's go to the next. So what's one. then the difference between our AFMNG and mixed glass? Yeah, you tell me. No, you tell me. Okay. You know we use also in AFM only green and brown glass because of these metal oxides. And as I said, you know you have free radicals. We see this more in session four and five. You know which are flowing over this, and they are creating free radicals. So that's a surface reaction. Now in our activation we increase the surface by a factor of 300. So we get much more, let's say 100 mm -hmm. to be on the safe side. So we get 100 times more surface, we get 100 times more free radicals, we get 100 times more bioresistant filter media. And this is why AFM is really the bioresistant uh, media and all the others start to, to biofilm. Yeah. We have to hurry up. I yes. Have, I watched that. Uh, it. Yes. Okay. So this is your topic. You okay, love yeah. carbon, so you do this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. This is more now for, for commercial uh, filters, but there were a lot of questions out this, and this is why I really want to bring in. You know, people say, well, I, I need carbon. And then you ask, what carbon? Anthracite or, or carbon? Uh, just carbon. And this is wrong. So let me explain the difference between activated carbon. We call it GAC, granular granulated activated carbon, anthracite N and anthracite H, because there is a huge misunderstanding. Uh, activated carbon, we recommend to take the, the coconut-based carbon, so the, the one which is done now is uh, out of coconut. Uh, John, mm -hmm. can I have yes. the, the command here? Drive uh, for once. Yeah, okay. This, and then you go through an activation process. In this activation process, actually, you just heat it up. You know, you heat it up to a very high mm. degree, like popcorn. Look at this, here you have the corn, and then you heat it up. Well, I'm, I'm not doing it, I'm just eating in the, in the movie. Yeah. And then you get a popcorn, and that's the same with the activated carbon. So you get a new grain, which has a massive, massive surface. It's not just outer surface, it's also a lot of inner surface. And this you do through the activation. Why do we use uh, activated carbon? Um, activated carbon, we, we, in general, we, we, we use to reduce combined chlorine and to some extent also THMs. This is where we use the activated carbon. So in this, it's really very efficient. Um, but few things to have a look. Grain size, uh, 0.6 to 2.4. Specific weight, it's only 500 kilos per, per cubic. So it's three times less uh, heavy than, than sand. Surface is enormous. You have roughly 1,000 square meters per gram. This is 1,000 times more than we have uh, in, uh, in, in uh, AFM. And it's more than 1 million uh, more, uh, than, more than we have in, with sand, yeah. Dechlorination half length value is at a filtration velocity of uh, 30 meters per hour, roughly 10 centimeters. To be honest, it's a little bit estimate because there are different different values out there in the market, but they never say at what velocity. What's that, what does this mean? If you come in with one ppm of free chlorine and you go with 30 meters per hour through 10 centimeters of activated carbon, you lose 50% of the chlorine. And of course, also combined chlorine, you know, the goal is not to lose the chlorine. This is more or less the byproduct. The goal is to reduce the, uh, the, the combined chlorine. Mm -hmm. Um, this is from Howard, but I think because of time reason, this is now where I have you where he, he very clearly explained it and on, on a very scientific uh, uh, base, but I think we leave it out and just go here mm -hmm. to explain you this, what Howard wants to tell us. You know, Howard says, uh, you should only use about five to 10 centimeters of activated carbon as a top layer on top of AFM or, or on sand, but better on, on, AFM, on AFM, of course. 
Why? Because then you still have chlorine. You see this, that you have still chlorine. You do not use up all the chlorine. You only use up half of it. If you have a big layer, like 50 centimeters that we have here, after 20 centimeters, all the chlorine is gone, and then there is no chlorine. Why is this important? Because as long as you have chlorine or any other oxidants in, in, in the water, you produce on the surface of AFM, uh, of AFM, sorry, of carbon, of activated carbon, free radicals. And they are really responsible to break down these organics and mm. also the, the organochloramine and the, the chloramine. If you go lower, you still have particles which are coming through, but then it becomes like a swamp. Swamp? Swamp? Uh, sponge. Sponge. A sponge. sponge. Yeah. Sponge, you know, or molecular sieve is, mm -hmm. is the right mm -hmm. word, mm -hmm. where these organics are, are kept in this, in this big inner surface of the, the carbon. This is great, but the downside is it will start then to become a biofilter because that's the biggest surface. Yeah. I mean, there is nothing as good as a biofilter as activated carbon. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so. So, question: Do you need to replace that carbon? Uh, not really. If you use it in the in the Dryden way, in the Dr. Dryden mm -hmm. uh, way, because this catalytic reaction always will produce a little bit of dust, mm -hmm. you know, because of this catalytic reaction. And in the next back backwash, this is washed out. So, you do not have to replace it. You refill it. So, if you see, you know, my my combined chlorine goes uh, up, then you add another one or two bags. Okay. Very easy, huh? Very easy, okay. very easy. And then the contamination risk is, is, is very, very small. Um, few things that you have to consider, and that's, uh, by the way, also the same thing. Oh, let, let me do first uh, these ones, and then we go one back. Okay. So what's the difference then with anthracite? Anthracite, you have anthracite N, and you have anthracite H. Let's talk first about anthracite N. This is done out of stone coal. It's not thermally activated. It's not a popcorn. It's just, uh, it's, a, it's a natural product that you break and you sieve. It's much lighter than sand and also AFM. And this is why you use this in heavy loaded water systems, especially in, in, in wastewater system, 30, <coughs> 30, 20 centimeters as a top layer to get room filtration. This you need for room filtration. It has no absorption capacity. It cannot remove combined chlorine. It cannot. It also does not remove uh, chlorine. Um, it's really for the room filtration that you have light but big grains on the top mm. who, who get uh, the big particles yep. and the fine particles are then in the sand or in the AFM. I know I have to hurry up. Mm -hmm. Anthracite H, made out of brown coal. Uh, so like activated carbon, but made out of brown coal, also terminally activated. It also becomes a popcorn, but this is important. The surface is three times less, it's still big, 300 uh, uh, square meter per gram, but it's three times less than activated carbon. And this is why the dechlorination half life length, I always mm. have to read that. That's a long it's one. It's 30 centimeters. Yeah. It's not 10 centimeters at uh, 30 meters uh, filtration velocity. So if you use uh, anthracite H, you need three times more. And this is also where it comes in the DIN. You know, in the DIN, they say you need 60 centimeters. And uh, with anthracite, I agree. With activated carbon, I do not agree. There you only would need uh, mm -hmm. 20 centimeters. Um, in Germany, uh, they use a lot of anthracite H. I believe the main reason for this is because they have a lot of brown coal and no coconut pulps, but uh, I, I can't see anything uh, else. Problem why we are against uh, uh, anthracite H or we are not recommended it, it can contain iron. And if you can contain iron, the iron goes into the water. With the chlorine, it's oxidized, and then you get green water. Light and green, it looks great, but most people do not like it. Mm. Um, we go warm back for backwashing. You want to take that, or I do it? Yeah, you can finish this okay. out and take the next yeah. one. Uh, because they are light, they have quite a high uh, bad expansion. Look at this. You know, Here we have the backwash velocity. Here we have the bad expansion. So at 40 meters per hour backwash velocity, we have 30% of bad expansion at 25 degrees. If you have 10 degrees of water, you have 50. So our 10 centimeters backwashed at 40 meters per hour gets to 15. So five, five centimeters of bad expansion. So just make sure that you have enough of freeboard. That's another reason that we do not go for 50 centimeters, it's not good. 
Last point, and this is really important. Um, activated carbon is hydrophobic, like AFMNG, but really hydrophobic. It's very light. You have to make it wet. You have to soak okay. it in water for 24 hours before you make the first backwash. If you put it in your backwash, all your, your carbon is gone. And please do not use air. It's really just for, for <laughs> water wash, mm -hmm. no air wash. Um, anything okay. else? No. Okay, let's go on. I'm getting nervous because of timing. No, you're good, you're good. Okay, so in summary. Yeah, huh? please in do summary, the summary. We have, if we use a five to 10 centimeter layer of, uh, of carbon on top of our AFM filter bed, we can reduce combined chlorine and THMs. Yes. Uh, if for most applications, if I understood you right, we do not need anthracite. Carbon will be. We never in pools. You better, never use right? uh, uh, okay. anthracite N. Anthracite yeah. N. You know, anthracite really N. You just would use. You know, if you have, have a very heavy loaded uh, outdoor pool and yeah. you want to increase a little bit of times between the mm -hmm. backwashing. Mm -hmm then anthracite N could make yes. sense. But really, we use it in wastewater. Pools are not wastewater. Well, some of them are. <laughs> uh, but to remove uh, combined chlorine and THMs, it's yeah. either anthracite H, don't forget to take three times more, or go what we recommend, okay. activated carbon. Got it. And you don't have to buy it from us. Buy it wherever you want, Jacoby, whatever. They are all good. But uh this and only 10 centimeters so you're also telling me that if i do this then i don't really need a uv for absolutely. dechloramination absolutely yeah that's uh alternative no and uh, we talk more about this in session number okay. eight okay to be honest i'm not a fan of uv i'm a fan of uv not but not for but dechlorination not for, this, huh? yeah. not for dechlorination yeah. because you you form thms yeah. and this is why uh, i'm not a fan uh, of okay. this but we talked more about this in session number eight but definitely instead of a uv carbon cheaper better um yeah cheaper Good. And better. i'm looking forward to that session number eight you may join me okay <laughs> i will i will so next uh, let's talk about filter hydraulics and everyone who knows dominic knows that he's an expert when it comes to computers absolutely <laughs> okay so dominic let me ask you if you um, let's say you need to buy a new computer what yeah. in in simple words what are you looking for oh i i call roger yeah okay no, uh, but yeah what i know i mean really important is software software yeah. software yes. i think is the most important yep uh anything else you tell me you're better in computers. okay so probably software and hardware right oh yeah right yeah, yeah hardware, okay yeah. okay so now you have Let's say you have a great software, but you have a, a poor hardware. Will your computer work? Uh, it will, but compromised, right? Exactly. Compromised. Exactly. And, you know, this is the exact same thing when it comes to filter. We look at AFM as being the software it and the, the software. filter vessel as being the hardware. All filter media are the softwares and the filters are the hardware and they have to play together. And maybe you bring us yes. to the next So line. if you want the best performance, you want the best hardware and the best software. So what's what's wrong about horizontal filters? Well, the horizontal bigger... filters are not, you know, they're around. They're around. They, I mean, they're around. They are, you, 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 you change the velocity. You start slow, then mm -hmm. you get fast. Mm -hmm. And this is in backwashing as well as in filtering. So this is not. It's not ideal. You should have vertical filters. So why are they being used then? Because they are cheaper. Filters? They are cheaper. I mean, maybe you explain it with this. So if this is a horizontal filter, or I let's, have... Let's start with this. This is a vertical yes. filter. This is the surface. If you change this filter like this, you lose a lot of filter height, but you get a lot of surface. Because my surface is now here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Three times more surface yeah. than you have it like this. Yeah. So I get a lot of filter for less money huh? more so or less for speak. the same price you get yes you get more a lot more yes. uh, on filtration uh, surface so that's the only reason so vertical filters are always a better solution absolutely huh? and here I'm, we talk about nozzle plate filters and lateral maybe filters, a last huh? come to horizontal yeah. filters i mean we see them and we use we have them a lot in desalination plants you know where you have massive you know you're talking about thousands of cubics of water to, mm -hmm. to be filtered at a low velocity there it makes sense and they are also big. You know, if you have horizontal filters in a diameter of one meter or 1.5 meter, this is shit. I mean, this, mm -hmm. is, this is crazy. You know, the minimum diameter of a horizontal filter should be two meters. Mm -hmm. Everything else, just forget. No. But 
let's concentrate on the, the vertical the verticals. that we see more often in, in pools. So why is nozzle better than, uh, than lateral? Uh, let me tell first thing. I mean, always, if you make an air wash, you need a nozzle plate. And why do you do an air wash? This you do with sound filters, because with the air, you know, first you go in with air 60 meters per hour or 90 meters per hour or something in between. You want to, 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 to grab the, the grains together mm -hmm. to rip off the biofilm. Mm -hmm. No need to do that with AFM. We don't have biofilm, so we don't mm -hmm. need this. But if you have sand, you want to do this, especially if the filters are bigger, one meter and bigger, and then you need a nozzle plate. If you use this in laterals, I have seen this. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Then, you know, all this air just comes out here in the first five centimeters. You just mix up the filter bed, mm -hmm. nothing else. You, you, you kill the filter bed. You make a big mess. Uh, so never use air if you have laterals. That's the first learning. Then the second thing, you know, with a, a nozzle plate, also if you do it only with uh, water uh, wash, you are in filtration as well as in backwash. You're sure you have an equal distribution. Mm -hmm. It's e equal. And if you have laterals, you depend if your filter manufacturer has done a good job. And some of them are great. You know, they are as good or nearly as good like a nozzle plate with a lateral configuration but some, some of them are terrible hmm. so yeah. what, what means terrible let's look at some okay. details here huh maybe first where it comes from you know here on the left side show the the, the nice blue filters yes i think it's called plus isn't it uh, so, could be. Yeah, they come really out to the end, or if you see the lower, you know, that's a bigger fault, you know, it's, it's a, a, a lateral configuration where you really split and calculate that you have the same speed at each point. It's well dimensioned, it's calculated how much of speed that I have, that I have an equal mm. distribution yeah. at a certain. And here you see other uh, examples, you know, for instance, the one up there, this is yeah. a smaller filter, very small, <laughs> very small laterals. I mean, this is just... Uh, half maybe huh? yeah maybe half uh or here a bigger filter but also not equal you know if you mm -hmm. have a certain diameter you have to divide it this is what we talked stack on session number stack one on same, session same thing one. same thing yeah and then you end up you know that you filter only in the middle and you backwash only yeah, in the middle yeah, yeah so you have really you're developing a large dead zone huh you will uh, have a dead yeah. zone there is no filtration yeah. if you have sand you develop your yeah. biofilm yeah. uh you get channeling uh, this is not good this is why you have to change in a poorly designed filter your sand a lot more often mm -hmm. one year or every three years or every five years whatever mm -hmm. so really the filter the filter uh hydraulic plays a role okay let's go to the yep. next one side class yeah it's always good i mean this is I, I would recommend to do it if you have a side class you see what's going on do i have it or do i have it uh, uh you know you have you have the flow meter this is what we learned in the last session but you still not see you know is the, is the backwash properly or not and this we can show you in the next slide you know the, the differences between uh, those so here on the left side you see cold blast filter hfs and here on the right side you see a, a, a red filter this is at uh, Beldana, our distributor from uh, from denmark mm -hmm. hello bo and uh, Søren. It's the same installation, and they had this red filter, and they made it specially with this uh, this side glass to show the AFM. But the downside is, look look at the AFM. Can you give me the, mm -hmm. the command? Yeah. yeah, you know it's it's washing only here in the middle. You know, it, fifty percent it's washed. Here you have water, and here with AFM it goes it goes really down down to the to the last centimeter. Let's have a look again. Look at this, you know, how it the, goes the band, all the way out, all the way to out. the walls. And huh? this is what you see with a side glass. I mean, this is a very special side glass. Usually you don't get it like this. Smaller side glass also does a job. You see full bad expansion all over the diameter. And here it's just in the middle. Mm. To be honest, if you would have asked me, Dominic, is this possible? I would say yes, but mm -hmm. filters two meters, whatever. Yeah, yeah. There you will have the yeah. big differences that you have these. I mean, these are 600 millimeter filters that you see. This is the same pump. It's a Besco valves. It's a body spec, variable speed, uh, mm -hmm. no flow vis. Oh, there have another flow meter here. They have a lot of money. Look yeah. at this uh, yeah. flow meter. Yeah. But yeah, this, this is where you see the difference. It's not to blame this red filter. I mean, this red filter looks great. I love uh, red, 
but it's it's really yeah. not doing the so, job. So the same is true for filtration then, huh? Absolutely, you know? absolutely. If we if you we know. have these dead zones, then we don't have the full surface area available yeah. for filtration. Yeah. And here's a good example of what that means yeah. in terms of uh, of velocity that we have uh, through a filter, right? You want to have to back the command or yeah, take it? Yeah, you can do it. Okay, yeah. Uh, you know, if you lose these 10, 10 centimeters that we have seen just with the red filter, and let's assume we have a filter of 1.2 in diameter, that's a filtration surface of 1.2, and we lose 10 centimeters on each side, yep. we get a, a, a one meter filter. We get this. And this only has a filtration surface of 0.8 square meter. So if we filter according to Dean, 30 meters per hour, with here 36 cubic meters per hour divided by 1.2 uh, square meter filtration surface, we get our velocity of 30 meters. All good. Same filter, but not 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 with a proper inner hydraulic. You only get an effective surface of 0.8. And then you get a velocity of 45, roughly 45 meters per hour. So this is not, yeah. Do you see, and this you can see in a way if you have a side class. Yeah. If you see, really, you have the bad expansion all, all over it. Mm -hmm. We are a little bit back in timing. I gave you yes. this. So I guess the same holds true for nozzle play much filters. Much less, much less. Yeah. Then you, you're you sure you have an equal distribution, yeah. but as you can so see you here... See the nozzles go yeah. all the way all out the way, to the walls. Really, at least 60 per square meter. And here you have a huge space. Yeah, huh? this, this is not good. You yeah. know, here, here, here you lose 10, 10 centimeters. This is not good. Also yeah. in the middle, this is not good. You know, you should be really covered. You know, in the middle, you have nothing. So that that's not yeah. good. Yeah. Or also the, the yeah. picture down there. Again, it's not to blame these filter manufacturers. I hope there are a lot of filter manufacturers around the world today with us. Guys, do it better. You know, we are selling software and we want from you best hardware. So you can improve it. And yep. there are some great examples out there in the market. Uh, yeah. Take it from a computer specialist. Huh? Absolutely. Good. <laughs> Okay, maybe one last word about the importance of the top diffuser. Yeah, huh? top diffuser plays a role. And here I start with uh, an example here. Um, maybe some people know I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a big fan of cold plus filters for different reasons. Mm -hmm. This is the old diffuser they had in cold plus, you know, where you had here holes and you also had below here holes. You can't see it on the picture. And this was not a good diffuser. It was perfect for backwashing, etc., but it was not perfect for filtration because you got the, the water out up here, but also up here. And then you always got a bad, like, uh, how you call this? A cone? A cone. A cone. Yeah. Uh, like a valley. Uh, a yeah. valley. And this is not good, especially if you work with carbon because you have up here, you have carbon, and in the middle, you have nothing. Mm. So, uh, uh, I convinced them to change to this here, to this uh, special diffusers from OWM. Also, OSPA, by the way, is using this. And this gives a perfect flat configuration. Maybe not that good in backwashing because yeah, the, the water has to go around and to jump in. You know, there the other is a little bit better, but to get a flat bath, it's perfect. Or if you take this example down here, this is very often used, uh, uh, Trichter. What is a Trichter? Um, Koenig. Cone, cone. Also cone. So yeah. no water, all the water comes up here. Perfectly for backwashing, you know, that the, the water gets into this, uh, in this cone, especially if you make it pressure free for this, it's perfect. But again, not great for filtration. And I've seen this, I really have seen this, you know, where we had a carbon filter, famous, really good filter, really good filter, but with this cone. And the bad was like this, there was a mountain. There was a mountain. There was just carbon here and nothing out. And this, especially with carbon, that's a problem. And that for, again, a side glass is so important. And you see uh, what's going on. Do you have a flat bat? This is okay. This is what we want. Or do you have an unequal bat? Especially with carbon, but also with sand or AFM. For the bat uh, height, do we have time for that? Or we leave it out? Yeah, to keep it short. Yeah. To keep it short, we'll talk more about this. The higher, the better. Yeah. We have done some performance tests. Roughly, you can say, uh, right, with one meter filter bath, that would be our favorite. We get the results you have seen. If you only have uh, 50 centimeters, you will go down in the performance roughly by 30%. Okay, good. 
Thank you, Dominic. Are we so in timing? Uh, we're minutes a bit to behind, go. so we're going to speed it up a little bit. We're okay. Are we cute? Good. Next, we want to discuss is uh, filtration and backwash velocities. This is a very simple calculation. Uh, it has three parameters, flow rate, uh, filtration velocity, and filter surface. And you take basically, I'm just going to talk about the first one here. Um, filtration is you take your flow rate, which is a volume of water um, uh, divided by uh, a time. And you put this through a filter surface. This gives you the velocity, which is uh, our first uh, calculation here. So here's your flow rate. We divide it by the filter surface area that we have. And this gives a velocity expressed as meters per hour. Philip, that reminds me, Australia, and I think also South Africa has told that uh, meters per hour, uh, we, use, we use cubic meter Per yeah, hour, exactly. Per yeah, meter. that's a good point, right? So this is the same. You can express meters per hour also as meter cubes per hour per meter square, right? Because mathematically you can eliminate the meter square here and the meter square here. So you have meters per hour left. Yeah. So please uh, apologize. We stay with yeah. meters per hour. This is a tonk broker or how you tell this is a cubic yeah. meter per hour per square yeah. meter. Yeah. This is a... Yeah. Yeah, that's too complicated for us. Let's let's keep it easy. I know our British guys like it to have it a little bit more yes. complicated, but and meters then, per hour, it's the same Of thing. course, we also use, uh, so in places, we use liters per minute per second or yeah. liters per hour, but this is an easy calculation and it's all metric. Of course, you can then also calculate your flow rate by reversing the formula or your filter surface area. Okay, let's take... Yeah. Uh, a few examples. So, well, 10 cubic meters per hour divided by a 600 millimeter filter. This is 0 0.3 square meter. Then you have 33 meters per hour filtration velocity or cubic meter per hour per square meter yeah. in the future meters per hour. Okay, let's have a look on, yeah. the, on the next slide. Okay. Honestly, this is one of my favorite, and this is really important. Mm -hmm. All pool builders out there, listen, listen. I mean, <laughs> We take an example. You have a 50 cubic meter pool. You say, okay, turnover rate of five hours. I would prefer four hours, but that's e easier to calculate. So we get a flow rate of 10 cubic meters per hour. Okay, are you with me? Now we decide which filter do we go for? Do we take a 400 millimeter filter with 0.1 square meter, a 500 millimeter filter with 0.2 square meter, a 600 with 0.3 or a 700 with 0.4? I left out the uh, the, the 400 millimeter. If we go for 500 millimeter, simple calculation again, 10 cubic meters divided by 0 0.2 square meters, you get 50 meters per hour filtration velocity. If you go for a 600 millimeter filter, 10 divided by 0 0.3, 33. It's Much rounded better. to 30. That's a huge difference. That's a massive difference. And if you look at the prices, you know, depending on, on, on which, I mean, here, this is a Triton, here the, the, it's 150 uh, euros. Sometimes it's 50 euros, depending on the filters. Sometimes it's 200 euros, but you get nearly half of the filtration velocity. I even would think about to go to a 700, where you get down to 25, because you see here, we are talking about 500 euros. With 500 euros or 200 euros, or sometimes only 50 euros, you get much lower filtration velocity. Please explain this to your customer. And then remember session number one, when we said, well, limit it of the budget and you have to bring it down. Don't make this filter smaller. The right filtration velocity is 30 meters per hour. You can do it at 50, yes, but you have less of filtration you need. Think on the pyramid, huh? think on the pyramid. So the pyramid with 600 is like this, with 700 it's like this, with 400 mm -hmm. it's, it's the opposite. 400 <laughs> would be 100 meters of filtration speed. I mean, this, this should be forbidden. So please do me a favor. If you use sand, AFM, I don't care, but please go for bigger filters. Small investment, huge difference. Yeah. Was this yep. emotional enough? I'm getting I always think, a little bit I emotional. I think you got the message that. home. Okay, you take this? <laughs> yeah, so obviously, and you know this from our first session, knowing the flow is key, right? Yep. It's key because you can set your variable speed pump uh, precisely. 
uh, to where it needs to be for the night, day, and backwash. You can click, I think, and we'll uh, we'll add a few yeah. bars here. That was that's uh -huh. the session number one. Yep. What is your takeaway? Always use a flow meter. Ideally, a flow is always used for reliable speed pumps in the future. Then you have everything on. Welcome the in the twenty first century. Yep. All the, the rest is caveman technology, yes, right? Exactly. So filtration velocities and backwash performance. Well, it, you lead us through yes. here. So you just mentioned, you know, that a 33 or a 30 meter per hour velocity is much better than, for example, a 40 or a 50. And here, this is really a good chart that shows the difference here. If we... Um, and this is, by the way, really measured values at IFTS. And this yes. is why we use this. And it's beside flocculation. If you go with flocculation, the effect is even bigger. It's but even bigger, huh? Let's, let's, let's stay with this and, and let's concentrate maybe first just on sand. Let's just look at sand, which is the, the yellow, uh, the yellow color curve here. We, you know, you can see at 30 meters per hour in comparison to AFM here, we have a multiple time better filtration, multiple times. These are worlds. And even at, uh, if you slow it down to 15 meters per hour, the difference is uh, is still significant. Huh? This is looking at the five micron uh, removal rate. Yeah. So here we really uh, just measured what is the removal rate at five micron particles, and as Philip said, this is always important for us. What is better, AFM or sand? Obviously, it's AFM. But the really takeaway you should take here and just concentrate really on the yellow bar that we have here at 30 meters, we have 30 percent removal. At 50 meters, we have nearly 80 percent removal. This is a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And you ask me, where are we with 50? I don't know. We haven't measured it yet. We will do it in the future. We'll get a new R&D center, which is at the moment built, but it's, it's, it's down here. You know, you can imagine you, where this will it's, be. It's on zero. You can't yeah. filter five micron particles yeah. at 50 meters yeah. per hour. Yeah. Big particles, you know, 100, yes. But small particles, no. You got it? Filtration, uh, velocity plays a big, big role, big role, especially in the small particles. And uh, again, go for 30 meters daytime, reduce it during nighttime to 20, 25, 15. You have all these advantages that we talked in session number one. Philip, please explain is this. Okay, so it's not just the filtration uh, velocity that's important, also the backwash velocity is key. Whatever comes in has to go has out. Has to go out. We want a minimum 15% bed expansion. Um, so with sand, in order to get that lift, we need a backwash velocity of 50 to 60 minutes, uh, uh, meters per hour. Plus, we need to backwash for about five to six minutes. Yeah. And uh, why is this? You know, because sand is 20% more heavy than glass. So that kinds for also for all of glass. And because you have this biofilm, you have to rub off the biofilm. That's why the backwash usually is a little bit longer. Yeah. yeah. But what we want, and this is what you see here in the video, we want a bad expansion. And the minimum is 15%, ideally it would be 25. If you have 40%, this is also great. Maybe you lose a little bit of media if your freeboard mm -hmm. is not uh, good enough. Not a problem for us, also not for the customer, then it's right. Yeah. But we want to have this. We bring the solids to, 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 to the top and we wash it out. This is really great on this video. You really see how the filter bed expands, yeah. fluidizes, and then really releases this is, uh, the this particles. This is what they tested. Yeah. Uh, AFM stand, this was the yeah. old one, yeah. in 2014. Yeah. That's in, yeah. in, that is how IFTS looks yeah. like. Hi, guys. So with AFM, we have an advantage. We can, we can backwash at a lower velocity, between 40 to 50 meters. And the backwash duration is also shorter because we have no biofouling. Yeah. I think with the new one, you know, the 0 0.4, 0 0.8, I think 40, we are okay. Yeah. Otherwise, we are getting yeah. a little bit high. Yeah. But uh, here, this is, you know, if, if you ask the people, how long do you have to backwash? Nobody gave me a, a, a smart answer. And here, my friend, <laughs> Philip, I even did not know that he is that smart. He defined well, a very simple rule, easy to understand. Please I'm, explain I'm, us. I'm full of surprises, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But I look better. So oh, no, the opposite. Let's assume, <laughs> of course he is. Let's assume we have a backwash uh, velocity of 60 meters per hour. That means we are, uh, the water is moving at a speed of one minute uh, in one meter or one meter in one minute. So if we have a filter that has from, let's say from the nozzle plate to the top diffuser, a distance of, uh, of two meters, it will take the water two minutes to reach the top diffuser. So the calculation that we came up with 
is the following. We say, okay, if you have a backwash velocity, for example, at 60 meters, um, you will need two minutes to reach the top diffuser. Now add 50% of that time uh, to remove the particles. So your backwash duration is three minutes. Minimum three minutes. Minimum three minutes. So how does this look like with 30 meters? So if we go to 30, it's a linear calculation. We go, then it will take four minutes for the water to reach the top diffuser. Um, we add again 50% of that. So we are looking at six minutes, minimum of six minutes uh, backwash duration. Have you got this? It's a very simple calculation, you know, from, from nozzle plate to the top diffuser, how many minutes you need at what speed, plus 50% yeah. or plus 100%. Yeah. If you have very small filters, never go below three minutes, yes. you know, because you don't know the hydraulic uh, of the filter, you will have not side glasses, so minimum three minutes or until the water really runs clear. Now, a last thing here is that when it comes to backwash, fast and short is better than slow and long. I know it from other, other fields where at least my wife tells me uh, the other way would be better. Mm -hmm. what, tell me, what, what, oh, what is better? Well, I leave it up to your fantasy, yeah. you know, to come up with some ideas. But really, when it comes to backwash, fast and short is better than long and short. And, and why? Because, I mean, water-wise, it's the same. So why is fast and short better than slowly and long? Because you lose less water in the process no, for one reason. The same amount of water. Okay. But you have, it's not just to bring the solids to the top of the you filter bed, it's also to wash the them bed. out. Some of the, these particles are really heavy mm -hmm. and they need a certain uh, velocity mm -hmm. to wash it out. Okay. Sorry to That's correct. That's a good point. No, Let's go to the good. next one. So I'm smart too. We all learn. See? Yeah. Okay. This is what you need, you know, uh, side glass, especially in commercial mm -hmm. filters. Then you see how a backwash looks like. And again, you know, whatever stays in the filter, whatever is not backwash is, will stay in the system and will react. You have uh, chlorine demand, you have disinfection byproducts. You know, a filter is like a pin. You say a pin, a hübel? Uh, a, a, a bin. A bin. B-I-N, bin. B -I -N, bin. Bin, okay. It's like a bin. And this you have to empty from yeah. time to time. Otherwise, it's overfilling. And yeah. if it's not properly backwashed, you see this on the low uh, side, then mm -hmm. you get clogging, biofouling, all the shit that we do not need. We have to hurry up. Uh, Philip, let's leave this one out. Uh, just very short. In our lab, uh, famous media produced in France, 50 meters uh, per hour backwash velocity. You see it's not moving. And after different backwash, it still looks like this. So it also has to do something with the shape, etc., yeah. of of the the grains, which is important. And uh, last but not least, you know, uh, temperature plays a role. This we already uh, have seen it with with uh, with uh, this is our old slide where we have seen it with with the carbon. Um, at 45 meters per hour, you have 20% bad expansion at 30 degrees. But if you have 10 degrees, it's 35 de degrees. Mm -hmm. So the colder the water, the more dense is the water. And uh, that makes an impact. So bad expansion in wintertime is, is bigger than in summertime. Of course, we have to calculate on the, the, the summertime. Next point. Um, this is in Belgium. That was an installation. These guys were very proud to do their backwash line. You see it's a backwash line because it's transparent. They go up here two meters. Never do this. You know, it's like to create a bottleneck. A, a backwash should be free flow, ideally pressureless. Mm -hmm. So please never go up in backwash. Always go down. F jump over this, this backwash line, but never go up. Always go down. Uh, I guess I take this. This uh, this session was sponsored by Besco. <laughs> no, not true. Maybe we should talk to them. Short short discussion to this. You know, uh, Besco House. This is a product that we sell and manufacture. Uh, uh, it's very old technology, but it's really really good. These are valves, and you see them how in, they work in a filtration mode, in a backwash mode. You just give here electricity. You open the solenoid valve. You let in the pressure, air pressure or water pressure. The, the valve goes in this position and then you make a backwash. This was invented in uh, 1983. We bought the company 2003, so we owned the company since uh, 17 years. It's caveman technology, what uh, Armin uh, Herger from Speck told me, and he's right, he's quite right. But it's, it's 
it's caveman technology, very old, but what it is, it's safe, it's easy. Very easy to install, you know, directly on the filter or, or on the wall because you can adjust here the, the, the connections. Very easy uh, to operate uh, or safe to operate. If you have a blackout in electricity, the, the valve will go back in filtration. And you even do not have to stop the pump, you know, if you go from filtration and backwash, mm -hmm. you don't have to stop the pump. You can do it, it's better to do it, but you don't have to. So this is why we call it safe and easy. Why do we show it? Because what is the other big advantage talking about hydraulics on, on a Vesco valve or a similar valve? It's you have much less of pressure drop. Let's take an example. You have a filter tricked on TR 140 or 800 millimeter filter, mm -hmm. and you want to backwash this uh, filter at uh, 50 meters per hour, then you need 25 cubic meters of backwash, 25 cubic meters per hour of, of volume. This here is Pesco. Here you have the volume. This is 25. And then you go up to the two inch valve. This is the two inch valve. And you end up with a pressure loss of 250 millibar, 0.25 bar. Great, no, acceptable. If you do the same with a multiport valve, in the multiport valve, we have here the, the flow rate. So this is 25. And here, this is the, the, the side mount uh, uh, pressure loss diagram in backwash. You go up here, you have 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 600 millibars wow. of pressure drop. This More is than enormous. Yeah. This is enormous. That means usually you don't have any more a proper backwash velocity and mm -hmm. that for not a proper backwash. Yeah. So this is really a big advantage. So mm -hmm. two learnings from Dave. I'm not against multiport valves, but size them correctly. Uh, you know, 800 millimeter filter would need already a two and a half or a three inch, right? Uh, or go to, to something else, but look at this and you will see this automatically if you use flow meters. You will see it automatically because you will not see the flow. So, uh, this is already a little bit the outlook for, for next session, session number three. We will talk about hydraulics. We will talk about things like this. Last, last example. Uh, Filter in China, 1.2 diameter. It's not from our partner, it's from somebody else. Two inch valve. If you want to backwash these filters at 45 meters per hour, you will need 50 cubic meters per hour of flow rate. Let's have a look how that looks like. 50 meters per hour, this is here. You see this, this war. This off war will chart, never, yeah. off the chart, this war will never stop, like in <laughs> 1984. You can't do it. You just can't do it. And these are the things, you know, that we will talk next, uh, next week in uh, session number three. So please join us in this. It will be really intensive, mm -hmm. like this one, even more intensive. Uh, we will show you, you know, how you calculate it. We will show you the magic ruler. The magic ruler will explain you how, how, how complicated, but also how easy it is. And also we will, as a special uh, thing, talk about uh, overflow pools yep. and especially balance tank and how you can do a lot of savings and energy and balance tank. And it will be good. I'm already looking forward to 